Simon Dool, eh? Every Thursday, the DDP, the Devon Dool podcast on the platform. You're in Pakistan, mate, commentating on the PCL. And we just talked to Simon off air there. You get a police escort to and from games. You're that important? We do, actually, Marty, yeah. To and from the games, we uh, we get a little police escort. It uh, ended in tears tonight, to be fair to you. What? We, what? Uh, we ended up in their uh, we ended up in their boot with a couple of blokes with AK forty sevens basically diving for cover. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> tell me you were driving. Please tell me you were driving. I was not no, I was not driving. I was sitting in the back. I was actually sitting in the worst seat possible. I was in the, the sort of the seat. You can imagine the old uh, the, the vans, the seat on the left hand side closest to the door with nothing in front of it. So I ended up flying off my seat into the front seat where Dominic Cork was actually sitting and, and whacking him him in the back. <laughs> Oh, everyone okay? Yeah, everyone's all right now, mate. Is that, sorry, right. just tell us just a brief. So, I, I can imagine Pakistan roads would be what? Would they even be more chaotic than Indian? Well, no, no, less chaotic. I've got to say, and, and normally uh, to the ground, it's fine. We get a um, the roads are actually closed because the teams have to uh, have to travel to and from or or to the game in particular. So they close the road for the teams on the way there, but because we do an hour's post-show after each game, uh, the roads are back open, so they're a little bit chaotic leaving the ground and getting back to the hotel at night. So uh, it's all good, though, mate. It's just part and parcel of the experience, isn't it? You love it there, don't you, mate? Yeah, it's good. Look, I mean, I hadn't been back for a long time since uh, until I came back last year and then obviously came back for the Test Series. Um, when was that? Just after Christmas um, and, and in the new year. Uh, just gone. So look, it was it was great. It was nice to come back. Um, you know, they've been starved of cricket for so so long. Of course, playing in the in the UAE and in Dubai, and um, they just they just love their cricket. They're passionate about it. It's um, you have to be be wary of what uh, what goes on. But I think if we you know if you do this job for long enough, I mean, I spend enough time in and around London as well, and I'm I, I never think twice about going there. So why would you think twice about going other places around the world? Good call. Simon Dool is with us, the DDP Devlin Dool podcast. So much cricket to talk about. I want to track back first to the befuddled, bewildered, bemused Australian batsman. And as you said last week, they can't play spin, Dool. I've been playing that quote of yours repetitively, repeating it every day since. Because <laughs> you're exactly right. Look, I, I, I don't know whether or not, and I've been, you know, talking to a few mates in Oz and that who are, you know, connected with this, and I can, you know, I'm not going to drop any names, but you know who I mean. And they're saying that maybe it's a lot of overthinking it. You know, these are good batsmen. It's not like they don't know how to play spin, but for some reason they're psyched out, or they certainly were in that test match. Yeah, you just don't come up against the repetitive. It's a bit like I talking to someone last week about it, Marty, and it's almost like they're coming at you with spin like the Windies were in the in the 80s with with pace. And so there's no let up. There's no there's no poor spinner. There's no poor bowling option, and and you are just under the pump, all ball, every ball, all day, and, and that's the key. And when you're just not used to playing quality spin, and to be honest, you know most teams come up, you come up against might have one decent spinner, and that's their lot. And, and when it's turning, and you've got three spinners, four spinners coming up against you, it's just incredibly difficult. And those guys know how to utilize those conditions well. And it does. It gets in your head. Uh, it wasn't a bad pitch at all. I mean, if you, you win the toss, you elect to bat first, and you only put 170 on the board. Then the opposition get 400 and roll you for 90. That is not a bad pitch. That is just bad batting and bad technique, and you've been psyched out. I love what Rohit said afterwards where he said, hey, uh, you know, this is this is like um, the Aussie captain having a Cummins, Stark and Hazelwood to throw the ball to in Australia. I've just got three guys that spin the ball really well. I thought that was a really great way of putting it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what I'm saying. I, I think, um, you know, it's a it's a it's, it's a tough, tough test. It's it's a real test of your of your technique. Whereas facing quick bowling is as much a test of your technique as, as your courage, you know, to get in behind it, to, to just wear the quick ball, to get one on the ribs, to get one on the arm, you know, to, to wear it on the inside thigh. That, that's as much about courage as it is about technique, whereas facing spin is all technique because you can be made to look absolutely stupid. Mm. And at times that's what happened. I also think their selection policy was so bad. Now, they'll play Travis Head in the second test match, and there's no guarantee he will do well, but he was their best, one of their best batters in the last six months. And to leave him out of the side for a guy like Matt Renshaw, just 
it, it, it was astounding some of the selections that they made. Obviously, the you know the the new um, the new kid they played was was a great selection. The new off spinner, that's all well and good, but I just thought the batting front they were they were you know, the selection policy was a little bit poor. I mean, far be it from you and me to talk about who should be the Australian captain, but do you really think that you know that they're suffering from the fact that it isn't Steve Smith? Yeah, absolutely. But they're, they're sort of stuck in a in a place where they said he would never captain again, and and you know they said David Warner would never have a leadership role, and so they're kind of stuck in that place where they can't go to that point again. They have to find someone else, and 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 you know and Pat Cummins is seen as the clean, squeaky clean, Mister Nice Guy of Australian cricket, so that's what they needed, and that's what they've got. Terrific series ahead of us to see whether Australia can wrestle this back. Speaking to John Wright yesterday, um, and Wrighty still works there. I didn't realise that he goes back and works in Mumbai every year. Um, but mm-hmm. he, you know, he was still, you know, 2000. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't you if they flew you in their private jet and well, paid look, you a couple of hundred thousand a year just to look at some players? Of course. Cool. Look, mate, I, I remember when we had the 2015 uh, One Day World <laughs> Cup here, and he came up for the semi final from Christchurch, and he said, Marty, he said, don't tell anyone. I said, how'd you get here? He said, they flew me up. I said, how? He said, I've been. Chopper, I said, from Christchurch. He said, he said, look, the guy owns <laughs> it owns the beer company that's sponsoring the tournament. I was like, look, the, this is wealth on a level. You've got to explain to people this is wealth on a level that we don't understand. You know, the richest men in India build houses. I'm talking that are thirty or forty stories high, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, and and it's just <laughs> it is next level wealth. What what you're talking about with those guys? It's sort of yeah. Look, I I wouldn't even begin to. They're you know, buying. Teams, franchise teams all over the world. They just bought the rights for the uh, for the IPL. I think they paid something like four hundred and sixty million or something for it um, for the digital rights. So look, they, they they have wealth beyond wealth. Just to quickly explain to people before we get on to England versus India and also the White Ferns. You know, as I've been avoiding getting onto that topic. Uh, is that so? So <laughs> when they pay that much for the digital rights, so I mean they're not paying that much to lose money. So quite obviously they're making money from it. Is is all they need is what the subcontinent audience? They got a billion plus people there. Is that all they need? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean the the, the group that um, the Ambani's sort of run. So they own the, the Mumbai Indians and MI Cape Town. They own a team in the uh, in the ILT Twenty that I've just done in Dubai. What they have is a company called Reliance, which is the um, dig- which is the tele- uh, telephone network. Um, so it's equivalent to what you would have a, a, a Vodafone back in New Zealand. But they've been laying 5G cable through throughout India for the last four or five years in preparation for this. So what happens is you will sign up to, I believe you'll sign up to a Reliance um, telephone package for your mobile unit, and they will give you the IPL for nothing. Now, when you think about a billion people, you know, maybe even more than a billion now, 1.2 billion. If you get 10, 15, 20% of that population, sign up to your telephone network and get a free phone or a new phone and also get the IPL for nothing, you, you, you sort of quids in. So I think that's that's that, what they've been looking at is laying that 5G cable in preparation for buying the rights. And now they've got the rights, so they can stream um, the, those, that, you know, the IPL on their platform and on their mobile phones. And that's oh, pretty much how wow. I would say 80, 90% of, of India watch it. Yeah, and, look, and it just, you know, I mean, then you, you look at the New Zealand Rugby Union and the All Blacks, we're such small tatties, aren't we? We, we? You know, we celebrate Silver Lake giving us $200 million. I mean, for God, you know, look, it's all on a scale, yeah. I know. But I mean, you know, we're not, you know, when you're talking about those kind of numbers, we're not competing. I mean, rugby as a sport isn't competing. And especially no. at this part, I mean, that's just the reality of it. Yeah. The rights are the second only now compared to the the NFL. So the rights for the IPL are second only in the world in a monetary value to the NFL rights. So that tells you how big they are. White Ferns, look, I don't even know what to say about this. I'm so disappointed. I mean, you know, I, 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 I want to be wild about it. I want to be annoyed about it. I'm just more disappointed and gutted because... And I, I actually thought that we were a lot better than what we are, but what, quite clearly we're not. The numbers don't lie. When, you, when you're all out for 76 and you're all out for 71 or whatever it was, I mean, the, the, I mean that's the stark truth of where we're at with bat in hand. It, it is, and, and, you know, and you know that I've been saying this for quite some time. If you continue to do what you've always done, you'll continue to get the same. And, and we have not changed one little bit. And, you know, I know, look, I'm going to sound terrible here i'll probably get chastised but they first of all they want parity they want money they want professionalism all of these things that these 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 girls have been screaming at for years and years and years um they get and the, the south african team earn and i've done i've done my maths and i've asked my questions about this 
not even 10% of the money that the white ferns that the white ferns earn not even 10% so it's, professionalism is not about getting paid Marty professional professionalism is an attitude then I read a quote the other day about the fact that um, they don't think the New Zealand domestic game is setting them up very well for the international game well I'm sorry but the New Zealand men who are contracted are not allowed to play any other competition around the world without an NOC yet all of the girls are allowed to go and play the hundred the big bash while the season is, is on if they want to so you know you are playing in these competitions around the world that all of the other teams are playing in so you are allowed to go and play all of these competitions so you know, you can't now say, oh, our domestic competition is not setting us up for international grid because you don't even play the domestic competition half of you. Well, and also, so, also, you know, you know stop moaning about it excuses. because that's that's the reality of it. There are only a certain amount of players. Those players are at a certain level. That's all it is. You can't ask all of a sudden for another 100 women to be playing cricket at, at the very highest level. That's not the case. You've got to build it up. Look, and, you know, this is what frustrates me as well with the, with the you know, the parallel between the, um, the, the uh, professional women rugby players. The men didn't get paid for 100 years. You've actually got to build a base, build a product, make it exciting, get people yep. watching, get crowds coming, get eyeballs on, get people interested and engaged. You can't just all of a sudden say, hey, we wake up today and we're on the same. That's just, it doesn't actually work like that. It, it's it, it's it, almost putting it's cart pie before in horse. The sky yeah, stuff, I, I, you know, you know, I believe so. It's pie in the sky stuff. And, 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 think, and this you know, is a result. The cricket have to take a role in this as well, Marty. It's, they, they have not been, I don't think they've been proactive in going out and finding um, women, young girls who can play sport, target other sports. There is now an enormous amount of money. There is a genuine, genuine career path playing cricket, not only for New Zealand, but all around the world. In, in these leagues, we've just seen the, you know, the um, first auction in the women's uh, Premier League in India. And, and some very big money for some quality players around the world being picked up in that tournament. So there is a genuine career path for these girls to look forward to now. I would, If I'm New Zealand cricket, I would be scouting athletics meetings. And, and I'm not being silly here. At 12, 13, 14, I would be finding the fastest runners. I'd be finding anyone who can throw the javelin, anyone who can throw the shot put. Athletes, go and get them. Say, look, have you thought about cricket? Have you thought about a career in cricket? We can, we can help you. We can give you a path. Way. All of these things that New Zealand cricket or the scouts or the people should be doing to make New Zealand women's cricket stronger, they are not doing. Oh, look, I, I point the finger also at the men's side of the game where we have got, you know, the largest Polynesian population outside of Polynesia in Auckland. You know, and yet we've had so few Polynesian men come through and play for New Zealand. Big mm -hmm. strapping lads. Not all of them can play legal rugby. Not all of them want to risk themselves doing that. They play Kili Kitty cricket in Samoa. I know that. Get him, get him, get him. Yeah. Know, Dion, Dion Nash has been doing great stuff at St. At St. Paul's in, um, in Ponsonby with this, mate. Mm -hmm. And they're putting cricket nets in, getting those young lads actually throwing a cricket ball, trying to say to them, hey, look, there are other pathways. If you want to be a professional sports person, how about this? You know, you, you know, your body might last a bit longer and you're, and you're certainly going to make a lot of money. Look, we've been talking about this, you and me, for, yeah. I would say, 15 years. And yet New Zealand cricket, I don't know where they are mm -hmm. on. I don't see... I don't see a pathway. I don't see a plan. I don't actually see genuine interest in this. No, absolutely not. And and that's that, you know that's a massive uh, a massive loss. And you just wait. You mark my words, Marty. In two three years, our New Zealand men's team are going to be well and truly down the bottom of this 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 run. We we have not had a great succession plan. I don't think of players coming through. We haven't introduced different players coming through we're now searching i mean what are they what are they called up over the you know the last couple of days they're searching nope they won't go back to trent bolt because he's decided not to you know stick to his contract I, I agree with that i don't have any issue with that but we don't have we haven't got a bowling group that's coming through to replace saudi bolt wagner you know jameson's injured again we we just haven't tried people or given them the opportunity to sort of work their way into this test side and and we're going to the price for that, I think, in the next couple of years, because Kane Williamson's going to opt the same way as Trent Bolt's gone mm -hmm. in the next so year. So Southie, yeah, um, you know, and, and Tim Southie might as well, and 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 we're going to be left languishing, uh, and it's it's a shame, it's a shame because I don't think, you know, in the last what four or five years or three years, they've just taken a pile of money for a for a really poor TV deal that they should never have done and didn't do their due diligence on. And, and they've let cricket go. I mean, it, they've lost cricket to a whole generation. They've lied to people about how many people were actually watching it and, and the people that took up the subscriptions. I mean, you don't throw, 
you don't you don't throw a TV rights deal away if you're doing well if it's making you money, and that's what's obviously just happened recently. So people aren't watching the game; they're losing generations of cricketers, and and it's it's a, it's a sad thing. It's really sad for me to have to look at it and say it because I, I just think we are losing the game. Today, day one, pink ball test. Yesterday was 1978, the 45th anniversary of beating England for the first time. It was just absolutely glorious. We had John Wright on yesterday. <laughs> just brilliant, his memories of it. He drove to the game in Jumbo Anderson's Holden. There were no team bus in those days. There's no management team. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that beautiful? There's something about it. I know you can't do that these days, but there's something about remembering your very first test for New Zealand. I drove in, drove in the Holden with Jumbo Try, and tried, and tried <laughs> to find a park That's outside the brilliant. ground. You know? Yeah, yeah, tried to find a park. There was no car parking space, so he probably had to pack his own bag too. Yeah, of course. Been, uh, yeah, which is something something you're probably not used to nowadays. But yeah, look, it, it is, and, and look, and I don't. I also know the game's changed, and and you know the the and it's changed for the better for the most part. Not for everything, but it has changed for the better for the most part. But um, but it is still nice to reminisce about some of those good old days, and I'm sure those guys still get together and and talk about you know how it was in their day, and and we, we'll probably do the same thing in another five or ten years yep. as well. So right. it's um, yeah, look, it, it's it, it, it's great to to sit back and reminisce, and Rocky would have I'm sure told uh, told the story and, and embellished it just a touch to make it sound better. Finally, then pink ball test tonight. Okay, well it's afternoon kicking off into tonight and Todong us versus England. They've won nine out of ten. What do we do? Do we bat or bowl first? No, oh, I saw the wicket. It looks like a bowl first, but um, you know, I guess you guys have had some horrendous yep. weather, so that's something I must say too, Marty. I hope everybody down down there is sort of looking after themselves and and, and looking after each other because obviously the country's been through a pretty pretty rugged time at the moment. So um, yeah, sending my best wishes to to one and all down there. But um, it, it looked like a, a bowl first surface when I saw the pictures of it. Uh, uh, what is the best way to beat England? Probably that. If we get an opportunity to use the new ball um, and, and see what we can do, try and sort of bowl them out relatively cheaply and, and, and bat very, very well. Um, that's the key. They will continue to come hard. Uh, I, I don't see their, their game plan changing whatsoever. So you'll get opportunities. You've just got to make sure we take them.